Somebody that know Somebody that know Somebody that know About his healing power Somebody that know About his saving power Sanctify power That's gonna be deliverance When you let it come down Good morning, and welcome to our worship service. We pray that worshiping with us as God's people will give you a sense of fellowship with Christ, as well as comfort and strengthen all of you this morning. The mission of our church is to proclaim, spread, encourage, and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ to all parts of the world. We are First Church of Christ Holiness. 789 Edgemont Avenue, Indianapolis, Indiana, and we heartily welcome you to our morning service. Our opening scripture this morning is coming from the 118th Division of Psalms. The word of the Lord says, O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say that his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say his steadfast love endures forever. Father God, truly your love does endure forever. And as we come to worship you this morning, we give you all glory and honor and praise to the Lamb of God, who came and gave his life for this world. We pray this morning, O oh Father, that you would be merciful upon your people in this city, in this state, and in this nation. There are trials and tribulations that we face everywhere, God, but we know that you are able, and through you, we can overcome. Encourage the hearts of your people, encourage the hearts of those who may not know you this morning, and we pray, Father, that worshiping with you this morning will bring a sense of peace. Bless those who are watching us this morning or may be listening to us and give them glory as we glorify the name of Jesus Christ. For it is in his namesake that we pray, amen. We pray that you would worship with us this morning and that through this, you will find peace with God. God bless you. I would like to share with you a few of our ways of giving or supporting our ministries. If you would like to support us, you can write a check, a money order, and mail it to 789 Edgemont Avenue. And it will be addressed to First Church of Christ Holiness. And that's 789 Edgemont Avenue, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46208. If you would like to set us up as a payee through your financial institution, please contact us at 317-924-0534, and we will be happy to share with you that mechanism of giving through your financial institution. Thirdly, if you have PayPal and would like to give through PayPal, our PayPal address is paypal.me backslash F-C-O-C-H-U-S-A-I-N-D-Y. That is F-C-O-C-H-U-S-A-I-N-D-Y. We look forward to hearing from you, also your financial support, and we thank you and trust that God will be good to you this day. God bless you. Now let's enjoy the message for today. God, I thank you, Lord, for this time that we have together. I thank you, Lord, that we are here worshiping God. Uh, uh, no matter where we are uh, in, this, in this world where we're uh, across the country, or whether we're right here local in the, uh, in the, the nap town, God, I, I thank you, Lord, for everybody that's listening. I pray that, that this message will, will go out and will touch those that are, are hearing and are watching it. I, I pray that it be a move, God, of the Holy Spirit throughout your people and throughout your church, God. Strengthen us right now, God, and give us all the, uh, all the patience that we need to get through this pandemic, Lord. These things I ask in your name, I pray. Amen. 
So today we're going to be going over a, a it's, it's going to be a campsite up in Philippians in the third chapter. And, and if, you, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to that. It's going to be Philippians 3. We're going to actually go through the entire chapter, but I'm not going to bore you. I'm going to, I'm going to break it up for you. So we have something to look forward to for next week and then the week after. So today I want to discuss not having any confidence in the flesh. Our theme for the three-week uh, sermon is going to be in actually the 14th verse. Same chapter, chapter 3, verse 14. I'm going to read that first. It says, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So that's going to be our type theme for the next three weeks. We're going to be understanding and trying to learn what it means to press on toward what mark, what goal, and for Christ Jesus. So let's get started. Verse 3, or uh, chapter 3, verse 1, further, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, evildoers, those mutilators of the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, we who serve God by his spirit, who boast in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. If anyone thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, the Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. Okay, so Paul is, is pretty much uh, going in on this, this chapter. And if, if you want the background story, Paul is... is it's, He's going out. This is post-conversion. He found Christ on, on the road to Damascus. And what's, what's happening now is, is that Paul is teaching the good news of, of Jesus Christ. He's teaching the salvation through grace and faith of Christ. Well, these, there were some Jews, some, a group of Jews, actually, some very super religious Jews following him wherever he goes. And Everybody that Paul spoke to about the grace and, and faith in Jesus, these Jews would go behind him and say, oh, that, that's not true. The, the only way that you can truly be saved is by being circumcised, by following the Old Testament rules and regulations, and belief in Jesus. You also got to do a little bit of work, in two to get to heaven. So those were, that's what the, the, the Jews were saying uh, behind Paul, as Paul urged the believers in Philippians, he said in Philippi, beware of those dogs. He, he, don't, don't worry so much about what they say because they're not true. They're, they're not right. They're, they're not the, the people that you probably want to listen to and have in your corner. They're the religious folk that believe that uh, getting into heaven is all about what you do and not about who you know and, 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 and not about Christ. Paul was saying the only way that you can get into heaven is through Jesus, by Jesus. What the Jews were saying was you had to do a lot more. You had to follow the rules and regulations. You had to do certain religious acts. You had to do a lot in order to get to heaven. But what I want to tell you today is that you don't. I'm with Paul. When you believe in Christ, that's, that's really all you have to do to get into heaven. Nobody goes to God but by Christ. And so in, in, this, in this text, I had a story for you. Getting ready for Marine Boot Camp. When I went to MEPS, and MEPS is a, is a kind of medical place where you go before you end up shipping off to wherever you're going to go. And MEPS is a, a joint military effort to make sure and screen that all the military applicants, no matter if it's Army, Navy, uh, Air Force, Coast Guard, Marine Corps, no matter what branch that you are choosing, you all got to go to MEPS to get medically cleared 
And so when I went to MEPS, and it's a long process, I'm telling you. But when I went to MEPS, what happened was is that as I walked into the doors, I saw that there were some buses lined up. And everybody, no matter what branch you chose, got on those buses. I saw people from the Army had, you know, uh, duffel bags, and people from the Air Force had, you know, their little carry-ons and all that kind of thing. And so I said, okay, well, I, I can prepare myself when I get on the bus to go to boot camp. A week later, I found out that I asked my recruiter, you know, I, I saw other people get on that bus, you know, with some things. W what should I bring? I want to be prepared. He said, nothing. I said, wait a second. What, what do you mean nothing? I, I, I saw other people bringing things on the bus. I don't want to get there and have, I don't want to be the only guy at boot camp with nothing. And so he said, yeah, you, you just take your orders and your ID. And I said, that's it? They said, yeah. So I went to MEPS about 3 o'clock in the morning, and you actually depart from MEPS to go to the airport or the bus station or wherever you're going to go. And when I went to MEPS, and it was, like I said, 3 a.m., I was tired. I got to stay in a nice hotel, though, but I did not have a single thing on me. I just had an ID and my orders. I didn't even have a wallet. My roommate, he had a duffel bag. He had compression shorts. He had, you know, his dog tags already. He had a bunch of stuff. And, and I looked at him, and I said, uh, you taking all that with you to boot camp? He said, yeah. You don't have anything? And I said, no. My recruiter only said I needed an ID and, and these orders. And he chuckled. It was at that moment I knew that I made the wrong decision. So I got on the bus and I get to, get to San Diego on flight. We get off the plane and we get back on a bus, and we arrive at the, 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 the location of where they do Marine Corps training, and there's these famous yellow footprints that you have to go and step on. So we all ran out there. We got yelled off the bus. We had to get on those yellow footprints, and then it was at that moment that they put this, this display, this PowerPoint up on the wall. And it, uh, long story short, without giving you the, the, the secret details of Marine Corps training, they pretty much just stripped us completely of who we were. At that moment, we could no longer say I. We could no longer say we. We could no longer say them or us. In exchange, we had to say this recruit, that recruit, those recruit, these recruits. So in essence, to go to the Marine Corps military training base, you only had yourself. That was it. That's all you needed. There was nothing that I could bring externally to the Marine Corps base in order to perfect or better my training. I just need the mindset. And so that, that, that kind of parallels with what this sermon is all about. You, when you come to Christ, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you learned doesn't matter what you know. doesn't matter who you know. doesn't matter all the accolades and the trophies and awards you got. When you come to Christ, you're by yourself. He only wants you. That's all that matters. He wants your mind. He wants your mind to be focused on him because he knows if your mind is focused on him, then there's nothing that you can't do and there's nothing that he won't do for you. The problem with the Pharisees were was that they believed that they could be religious and get into heaven. That the more they knew signified them and established their mark in heaven. Well, Paul goes on and he says a little bit later in the verse, in verse 4, he says, Though I myself have reasons for such confidence, he says, if Someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh. I have more. And then Paul lists a, a bunch of things that would make him the perfect person to go into heaven if external objects were the goal. You see, Paul was circumcised on the eighth day he was born. Paul was an Israelite, so he was a chosen people. And more importantly, he was a tribe of Benjamin, which is a, a pretty huge tribe back then and very prominent. He also was a Hebrew. 
It says Hebrew of Hebrews. So Paul wasn't a, a mixed breed. He, he was Hebrew through and through. Daddy Hebrew, mama Hebrew. And he had two parents that were devout religious people that wanted to do everything by the book for their son. And so in regard to the law, he was a Pharisee. And Pharisees were like the top dog of that sect of Jews back in the day. They knew everything about the Old Testament. They could recite uh, verbatim the Pentateuch or the first five books of the Bible without hesitation. They were very strict in their studies and they were strict in their learning and that's why they knew and they prided themselves on their knowledge. As for zeal and urge, he persecuted the church. He believed that people of that time, Gentiles, and, and Gentiles are those that weren't chosen. Uh, so Gentiles and Jews, Jews were the people that chosen of God, Israelites, and all that such. And, and Gentiles were everybody else, pretty much. And so Gentiles uh, would go around and they would believe and listen to all the, uh, the disciples and apostles that Jesus was the key to salvation. Well, these Jews said, no, that, that's not true. And so Paul at that point was Saul, and Saul said, you know, uh, I'm going to persecute the church because Jesus is not the only way to get into heaven. But as we know, Saul had a troubling time on the road to Damascus, and he became Paul. And so now Paul is preaching, contradicting to what he preached before. Now Paul is saying Jesus is the only way. And, it, and at first glance, we will look at this, this chapter and from verse 4 through verse 6, we, we feel as if Paul is kind of conceited. And we feel as Paul is, is kind of being very boastful about who he is. Well, the, 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 the scriptures that follow show us very differently. Paul is actually saying that actually none of that stuff matters. I'll prove it to you. In verse 7 it says, But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. That's huge. Everything that Paul is saying that he acquired as a Pharisee, he now considers rubbish. And I find that the more you get close to God, the more you learn about Christ, the more your eyes are open, and the more mature you get, and then you, you, you kind of figure out that what you thought you knew, you don't know anything. And so by sticking with Christ, by pursuing Christ actively, by keeping, by keeping him the, the main focus of your life, you will start to see things a little bit differently. You start to feel a little bit differently. You have this sense of security about you. And it's a feeling that never gets old. It may feel like it's faded away when times are getting rough and when times are, 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 are looking bad for you. It may feel as though that feeling just is fleeting. But the Bible promises us that if we draw near to God, God will draw near to us. There's no withdrawal from God when you're sticking with him. When you and God are, are walking together and you, you guys are living uh, together and, and you're prioritizing Christ in your life as the first priority, God said he'll never leave you or forsake you. He doesn't say that you won't ever go come across any issues because, you know, we're human and we're going to have issues. We're going to have worries. We're going to have stressing. We're going to have things that we are not going to want to deal with. But I want to encourage you to know that God has never stopped thinking about you. He's never took his eyes off of you. And I know sometimes you may feel alone, but the title of this sermon is, is, is to keep going. You may feel at this moment that, you know, between jobs, maybe. Maybe you're feeling sick in your body. Maybe you actually contracted COVID. Well, if you're watching this, you should throw your hands up right now and say thank you because he's got you here for a reason. There's a purpose for you watching this right now. And just like I'm looking at you, God is doing the same thing. He's saying, don't worry. 
I got you. So throw off all that other stuff that you had. I probably m might make a, a couple people mad. I might get an email later, but being the most religious person in the world is not going to get you anywhere. What you wear to church, you're not going to get any brownie points with God. I hear all the time this misconception of bring your best to God. Bring, wear your best, act your best, be your best for God. You know, I don't really like that. Because that means that you're putting on a mask. That means you're not being you. See, when I came to God, and I, I did that, I, I, I wore the, the best stuff. I, I, I spent countless dollars, or I should say my grandmother did, <laughs> spent, growing up, spent these most lavish suits and everything, and, and, and I get that if, you're, if your budget affords it and, and everything, but I look at bringing your best to God as bringing your absolute willingness to Him, bringing your desire to Him, bringing your wants, your dreams, your goals to God. That's bringing your best. Not wearing some fresh white Air Forces to church or fresh crisp jeans or the most expensive clothing in the store. Because believe it or not, that stuff is going to burn up. <laughs> but won't burn, what won't burn up is your passion for him. So it doesn't matter what you look like. It matters what's on the inside. It doesn't matter about what you know, the things that you can do, it doesn't matter that you can recite from Genesis to Revelations in one breath. It doesn't matter how many scriptures you know. If your heart is not with Christ, then you are missing out. And I want to teach you today about authenticity with Christ. Because it doesn't matter about the accolades. It doesn't matter who you are. Paul says this in verse 8, What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have, I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. And we'll stop there because that's getting a little bit into the next week. But just think about it for a second. Think about what you're doing. Right now, think about what you've done yesterday, what you're going to do today. Have you included Christ in your life? Is he something that you think about constantly? Is he something that you, that you dream about? You know, when I, first, when I first started knowing Christ, I, I couldn't stop thinking about him. I couldn't stop telling God about my goals and my dreams and my aspirations. But as time got on, life got hard, like it always does. And it seems as though those dreams and those kid-like uh, goals se seem to go away with it, but that's not what Christ wants for us. He still wants us to have that passion, that kid-like faith. I mean, he says in the word that all you have to do is have a, the faith of the size of a mustard seed and you can move a mountain. So whatever mountain's in your life right now, getting first place in the Bible quiz won't, won't move it. But knowing Christ will. Father, I thank you. Man, God, you're awesome. I thank you for just the ability to, to just thank you for, for just being able to raise my hands, God. I thank you, Lord, for the, just the, that's the gift of thought, God. Wow. To be able to think 
about the past and, and the present and the future. I, I thank you just for the mind, Father. And right now, I pray that our mind be focused on you, God. I pray that there be nothing that d- will distract us, nothing that will take us away, God, from you, because we already know that there's nothing that we can do that will separate us from your love, Father. If you're if you're out there, I just ask that you just, if you can, raise your hands. Have that quiet moment with God right now. If there's anything that you need to bring to God, do it. Don't wait. Right now, his hands are open. His mind is ready. His eyes are viewing you. He's ready to accept anything and everything. Trust me, he can bear it. Don't let the distractions of this world come between you and the love of Christ. If you're out there and you don't know Christ, there is no better path to follow. There is no better king to surrender to. I pray that you seek him. Fill your your heart with with things of of Christ, not things of the world. And I thank you, Lord, once again for who you have watching this. And camp your angels about them and help them to feel your presence, Father. These things I ask in your mighty name, I pray. Amen. If you don't know Christ, now is the time. Now is the time to, to, to invest in the, the biggest get back profit in the entire world. It's going to cost you, though. It's going to cost you your wants. It's going to cost you your desires. Anything that's earthly, it's going to cost you. And in exchange, he's going to give you more. More than you can ever ask for or think. He will do so much for you without you even knowing it. He'll go before you and open doors that you never even thought could be open. He will close doors that you never thought could be closed. He will heal wounds that you never thought could be healed. And I'm not just talking to unbelievers either. I'm talking to those that are are struggling with their faith. Right now. He will do for you what he did do before for you. He will still clean you up. He will still accept you for who you are. You don't have to be somebody else for Christ. So if that's you, know that you are encouraged right now to know that there's nothing that you can do that will separate you from Christ. So if that's you, if you're bold enough, just go ahead and say I in the comments and we'll pray for you. If you're new to this channel, go ahead and put new. We'll pray for you too. I want to prepare you because get ready because for this this next three weeks, we are going to really try to unleash the beast with inside of us to get so close to God and, 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 and to get exactly what he wants from us. A lot of times we think that we, don't, we got to go to church and get something from church, but we go there to give something. We're going to give our hearts and our minds. God bless.